that Jesus gave his life for your sins and my sins. This is one of the last places in the UK you'd expect to see evangelical Christians. They've come to the doorsteps of Britain's largest Islamic convention with a mission to convert Muslims to Christianity. Jesus gave his life on the cross to take away your sins. Believe in Jesus. I came uh, as a Christian to represent my faith. So I go around sharing the good news, the love of God all around. Uh, so today I thought it would be a good time because there's so many people coming. The group showed up without formally registering for the event. Yet, instead of being asked to leave, they were invited in. Once inside, the Christian preachers looked visibly anxious and were chanting biblical verses to calm their nerves. They were hopeful this bold move to infiltrate an international Muslim event would prove fruitful. What they didn't know was that they walked into the domain of Ahmadiyya Muslims, the only sect in Islam whose core beliefs challenged the narrative that Jesus died on the cross and later ascended to heaven which in essence is to question the foundations of Christianity. How are you? Uh, are you local then to the area? Uh, no, from London. Yeah. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I see you brought your cross along. That's right. If you've got time, and I don't, don't know, but there's, uh, there's, we've got some interesting things here for, for Christians to talk about that our story of uh, Jesus. Ahmadiyya Muslims hold the unique belief that Jesus, peace be upon him, survived the crucifixion and traveled towards the east to continue his ministry among the lost tribes of Israel. They claim that his tomb, containing his body, has been rediscovered in India, where it can be seen to this day. Why are you carrying the cross? Imam Ibrahim Noonan, a former Irish Catholic, was intrigued to see the cross, so he stopped to speak with a group. Totally attacked me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's our missionary in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, being who I am, being Irish, I just cracked a joke that, um, you know, that uh, would you like me to break the cross? And from there, a whole discussion started on what did I mean by that? So I explained to them that uh, the founder of our community, the Hazrat Muhammad al Qadian, basically came to break the cross, meaning to elaborate upon the true teachings of, of what Jesus was all about. As a former Christian studying to be a priest, Imam Noonan is very well versed in the teachings of Jesus and claims the Bible led him to Islam. He never said, you have to believe that I have to die on the cross and be risen again. He said, believe there's only one God, right? Obey the commandments, okay? Respect your parents. He said, this is how you will attain eternal life. From there, uh, some other member of that church came to me and the part which he heard, me saying that Jesus actually survived where he was buried and died at the age of 120. We went seeking the lost tribe of Israel. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to say, all this explanation, where is it from? You know, we, we, we know from scripture right. that Paul followed Jesus followers yeah. in Damascus. So we have we'll up go to from that so, point so, we'll, so, we'll go from that so, point. Right. So from now, that. okay, so yeah. we know that he left Jerusalem. We know that. Let's no, go I can't from be finished. Yeah. So now we know, we know that he left Israel. Okay. We know that he went to Damascus. Okay. Historically. Okay. Now there are other books, historical books, which demonstrate. One book. Give me one. No, many books. Give many, many. Give me one. Give me many. one. Jesus in India. Right. One one brilliant book written on this. Jesus in India. Yeah. Right. If you don't, I can get you a copy. Okay. Right. That proves categorically that Jesus went to India. The Gospel of Thomas proves that Jesus was in India. Uh, what I really, really admire with Ahmadiyya Muslims is uh, you guys are uh, open in the sense you, you, we can really have, even though we disagree on things, we can really have that friendship friendly discussions. I like to have dialogue rather than monologues. Ahmadiyya Muslims argued that on the night before the events of the crucifixion, Jesus prayed fervently to remove the cup of death upon the cross. Therefore, it is inconceivable that the prayer did not reach the divine throne, especially as Jesus taught his disciples the power of prayer. That's why I was referring to the Hebrews 5.7, because in Hebrews 5.7, this is what it says. He, in the days of his flesh, who offered up prayers to be saved, and his prayers were accepted 
Yes. Yeah. Because he was saved in the resurrection. No, no, that's yeah. not what it said. They said and his prayers, yeah. and his prayers was accepted. Yes. Out of respect, God had for him. Right. So this is clear that God accepted his prayer to save him from the cross. Um, I thought the conversation was going to finish there, but when someone said, "Would you like to go inside and continue?" I said, "Yes." I promised you a meal. So we went inside, we sat down, and we were still stuck on that same point. When I asked them about certain parts of the Bible, they were asking me for the references. And I was quite surprised by that. And I actually said to them that, don't you guys know your scripture? Don't you know? I said, you're debating with me that I'm wrong, but yet you cannot go to the reference of your own Bible. Well, it's a bit strange that a Muslim can give you the references. Look, you said you read the Bible from the beginning. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say I read the Bible. You are the one who said that you are the one Now we've established two things. You have not read the whole Bible. I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie. I've read the whole Bible from the beginning to end. Sometimes you get some heated up exchanges, uh, but that's how we are. Some people are kind of um, kind of passionate; they want to share their views. And uh, yeah, but but uh, um, finally, I think you, I don't know whether you saw that both of us we hugged each other and and then we okay. So the, the key thing is uh, to have a good understanding of each other. But I think the underlying other reason they came was they saw this is a big massive, one of the biggest Muslim conventions in, in UK and this was an opportunity for them to come and, and save the Muslims and, and bring them to Jesus. I don't think they were expecting for us to be calling them to Islam and to uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and informing them that look the very Messiah that you're looking for has already returned. The good news that Jesus has indeed returned. At least examine the claim. You know, you yourself said to me that he will come like a thief in the night and no one will know him. So one thing I am really, really um, struck me is the, 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 the unity and, and the, the way that which is organized. Even when I was looking from outside, you feel like nothing is going on from the outside. But as soon as you come, it's like, it's, wow, big difference from what you hear and what you really actually see here. Um, so the positive thing would be, I'd say, that in the end we hugged each other, we, we said, look, I said to them, look, this is in the spirit of debates, and we'll probably never always agree, and maybe we may part uh, our, our, our ways. But the point is, as I told him, my job was just to convey that message to you. It's up to you whether you take it on and, and, and reach further. And the interesting part was that he asked, could I, see, would he, could I see him again, and meet him in his church in Tooting. Which I intend to do. Is ma u sautasama ja al masi u ja al masi. The person of Christ is vitally important to the contemporary world. His importance does not remain confined to the Christian world alone, but also to other major religions such as Judaism and Islam in particular. If these powerful religions were to unite in one common understanding, about the nature of the person of Christ, his first and also his promised second advent, then such an understanding would lead to the resolution of many problems confronting mankind today.